Okay, we are on Warwick Base Camp 2016, uh, yet another uh, edition of this fantastic festival, and we are here with uh, Dennis Chambers. Hello. Hello. What are you doing here? It's Base Camp. I know. I, I said the same thing. Well, I asked the same thing when they asked me about doing this uh, back at the NAMM show in LA. Like you, uh, you, you know, said to them, mm -hmm. you know, I play drums, right? The, I don't yeah. Really, I, mean, I do play bass. Bass is my second instrument, but nobody knows that. Nah. Uh, but no, they said for long. Yeah, you know. But you are playing drums here. <clears throat> but you are playing drums. Playing drums here, yeah. And you are teaching the students yeah. how to play bass with the drummer. Yeah. And what can they learn from you? Actually? Well, I mean, you know, they learn what the drummer's perspective is, mm -hmm. like how to how to play with them. And also for me, you know, like when I go around. And to the other classes, I learned what what the basses, how they, what their perspective is playing with drummers. Mm -hmm. uh, so, what is the most important thing when you try to play drums with the people uh, that you are, don't know? Actually, you never played with them before. Well, first, I mean, it all depends if they're artists, you know. Or, I mean, for instance, like a, you know, for artists, you have to learn their writing, how they write, what, how they think when they write. Um, but if you're just the you know the bass player, like I'm the drummer in the band, then you have to figure out like how to play with each other because we're both trying to aid to aid to a groove, yeah, or to the music. Mm -hmm. And you said uh, a one word, which is very important, I guess, groove. Yeah. And the thing is, we are from Poland. In Polish language, there is no word for groove. Mm. Uh, and when we want to say something about groove, we just use the English word groove. But can you explain what the groove is? Groove is feel. You know, it's just like it's, it's a feel. Simple. But no, yeah, but I mean, but you know, just the word groove, mm -hmm. it, it can go into to great depths. It all depends on what level of, of groove you're, I mean, what level or how you feel. I mean, for instance, like, if you like uh, uh, metal music, mm -hmm. You know, like soul music. Well, there's a groove in metal music. You just gotta figure out. I mean, if something is moving you, yeah, that's a groove. If it's moving you, a feel. So it's the uh, the feel, the rhythm that is moving the listener. Yeah, just like that. Yeah. Okay, that sounds very simple, but it's not that simple because playing it is well, it's a hard thing. Well, you know, it's it's uh, it's one of those words where it could mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. Mm -hmm. You know, for instance, like like I said, if you like metal and I like you know soul music or funk music, you may not like what I like. I may not like what you like. But the bottom line is, it still moves you, no matter what you know what you listen to, and it's a groove. And it's what makes music good. Yeah. Good. Uh, you are playing with the students, as we said. Uh, you are teaching them, but can they teach something you? Can you learn something from them? I can learn what. But uh, yes, but I, I I learned basically you know what not to do. <laughs> <laughs> so what not to do? What is that thing? What are the things? Well, <clears throat> you know there you know like there are things like when I first learned how to play you know music you know I I, I in the beginning I learned not to do certain things because it just don't work. As the years go by, you forget. Because mm -hmm. you're so busy into like you know learning all this other things, all these all this other stuff. But when you listen to a beginner or a new new guy that come on the scene, uh, who been basically playing for like four years, mm -hmm. you rediscover the things not to do. And for example, you can't play bad notes too too to bad notes. Mm -hmm. um, um, you know, when, you, when you're trying to compose something like yesterday in my class, I tried to get guys to come up and play with me mm -hmm. and, um, you know, try to, you know, inform the audience that, you know, it's my first time playing with this person, first time meeting this person, mm -hmm. and now we're going to play and see what happens. So we played. And like two or three guys that came up, they were, they were good. You know, and we created like a uh, s some form of structure of music where everybody was sitting there, you know, grooving. Mm -hmm. 
And one person particularly, you know, that went through that, um, the audience thought that we played with each other and it was all planned. Mm -hmm. Because that person, and this was the beginner class, by the way, that person, um, when, when she walked up on stage, you know, her thing was like to, you know, like listen to what's going on at the moment, listen to the room, not listen to the audience, just listen to what was on stage, which was her and myself. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you know, uh, you have a better chance of uh, surviving uh, a group. Uh, you know, you have a better chance of surviving a group thing, you know, where, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, but yeah, you, you have a better, a better survival rate of, of like, you know, like, dealing with a, a musical situation. Mm -hmm. Because if you can do that with two, you know, and I try to tell them, you know, like when you're in a, in a band or a, when you're in a jam thing, it's not to try to play everything you know. You know, mm -hmm. and that's what, what the younger musicians, you know, do right now. They, they just try to play everything they know. You know, every hole to fill up, it's like, wait a minute, man, you gotta learn how to play music. I mean, I don't care if you can, you know, like some guys, they wanna be the fastest, you know, on the instrument. Yeah. Okay, well, so what is the fastest if you can't play music? And there is a difference between playing music and playing just notes or riffs. Yeah. I mean, you know, like, you know, for a drummer, you know, like Buddy Rich was, was you know, really a fast yeah. guy. You know, Billy Cobble, you know, very fast guy. I'm very fast. But it don't mean anything if you can't play music. We still gotta play music, mm -hmm. but if you if you go through playing music and you just want to demonstrate how fast you are, and then you know you're not really listening because you're too, too you know you're too busy trying to play everything fast, you know. I mean, if it's, if the tempo's here, and then every moment you're trying to fill up like you know how many beats you can put in that bar, where's the music in that? Because you're not the only person on that bandstand that you have to play with. Now, what if the bass player or the keyboard player who can, or the guitar player who can be very busy themselves? What if they're, you know, like, uh, <clears throat> what if, you know, like, you know, for, for a moment, they have to, you know, they want to play something that's very musical, that may guide this thing to go down another way. Mm -hmm. And you're blocking them because you're too busy, <laughs> you know. You missed Showing the, off. You missed the you missed the ramp to get off. Mm -hmm. I'll ask you a, a slightly different question because you are the must, one of the masters of your craft of, of, of drumming. So, is there anything that you can't play that you are not able to play? There's a lot of things I can't play. For example. Um. Uh, <laughs> that's, no, that's tricky. No, wait. I mean, uh, there's, there's, you know, uh, classical music. I love classical music, but I, I can't play it. But there is, uh, there's not much room for the uh, just drums in the classical music. No, 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 but snare drum. He, he's an expert of classical music. No, no, but snare drum. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I love the, you know, when I was uh, going through high school, we used to play classical music, and I was just, the, the uh, I think I was number three in line of the snare drum guys. And I think the reason why I could, you know, at that time, I could play classical music, be, classical music because some of the pieces didn't require a lot of snare drums, mm -hmm. you know. So, you know, you sit there and watch and the bars go by. Yeah. And then you fall asleep, you know. And then, you know, when it's like bar number, you know, like a hundred, Something you know, drum block, you know, you know, you know. So, so it was boring. But I love listening to classical music, you know, but I just can't play it. Okay. And during your whole fantastic career, you play with a lot of great musicians. Uh, I have some some of them right here, John Scofield, Stu Dan, Carl Santana, Victor Wooten, among others of course. Uh, but 
The question is, what are you up to right now? Well, this year has pretty much been uh, just doing clinic tours. Mm -hmm. You know, I just uh, completed a, a tour through China. It was really interesting, you know. Interesting you know, in, uh, in the sense of like uh, normally when you do uh, clinics and drum seminars, mm -hmm. it's normally, you know, like teenagers on up. In China, when you do a, a, a clinic, it's like, like kids are like five or four years old to teenagers, you know, like mm -hmm. 15. Yeah. They're starting very early. Yeah. But you started very early too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I, you know, I was thinking, you know, like maybe, you know, like a lot of those kids, they don't really want to play drums. <clears throat> You know, it's, you know, when you when you sit there trying to like teach them or try to show them things and they're like going through the motions and the minute you stop, they're kids, you know, so, you know, kids' minds is like they always want to be moving, always want to be doing something. And then you get a lot of, you know, kids like, you know, hitting a pad, not really paying attention, mm -hmm. you know. That may be very hard for the teacher. Yeah, yeah. But tell me, I may be wrong, uh, but I guess that... Kids are very creative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kids' minds are like sponges. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, you know, it's easy to teach a kid something if he really wants to learn. Than a grown up. Reason being, kids' minds, you know, they don't have responsibilities. They don't worry about like, um, you know, you know, they got to pay the mortgage. Or, or pay their uh, monthly bills, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, car notes, you know, girls. And they can just play. They just play. And they have no borders. Yes. Yeah. You can't tell them, you can't do that. Yeah. You know, when you become teenagers and, 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 and grown men, or, you know, men and women, you know, there comes responsibilities, you know, like, uh, you know, paying your monthly bills, uh, whatever they are, and kids. Mm -hmm. That. So is the best to start early or not? No, I, I think it's best to start whenever you feel you know you want to start. Mm -hmm. You know, it's never too er, it's never too too late or too early. So it must grow in you. Yeah, so you want to do it, just do it. I mean, I you know I know some people who who are like um, they have a God gift of playing instruments. You know, it's like whatever they wanted to do, they just play, you know, pick it up, and they just, within a month or two, mm -hmm. they, sound like they, they sound like they've been playing for like years. There are some people. One of my friends, uh, this guy named Will Randall, I'll never forget him, you know, he, he played trombone when I first met him, he just picked up a trombone, and within three months, you know, he went from like cheer, uh, cheer one, three, no, four, he was in cheer four, and then he went from cheer four to cheer one. In three months. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. Yeah. And then he got bored with that and he, he picked up a guitar. Okay. So, speaking, of, speaking about friends, uh, the last question I got. Uh, let's pretend you are uh, creating a brand new band. Okay? And you can choose uh, every musician that ever lived to this band. Who would you choose? Well, maybe that's a hard one. <clears throat> Jim Beard on keyboards because Jim ears are huge. Uh, guitar players, man, that's a hard one because I've, I've played with a lot of great guitar players. Um, uh, guitar players, it would have to be Jimmy, no, not Jimmy Tom. John Harrington, mm -hmm. who plays with Steely Dan right now. And the reason for him is because, you know, normally guitar players, you know, famous guitar players, you know, you get them in band, or, you know, John Schofield. Right? You know, mm -hmm. John Schofield is another one I would love to, to put him in a band or have him in my band. 
Uh, and the reason, because, you know, normally guitar players, when they become famous, all they want to do is play their music. They don't want to play nothing else but their music. And they don't really care about anybody else in the mm -hmm. band but their own music. Um, Schofield is not one of those kind of guys. You know, John Harrington is not one of those kind of guys. Um, every time I play with those guys, uh, they give me the feeling like they're, they're there for um, um, the same reason why I'm there. It's just, to, you know, like, try, how do we make this work? And they put their musical abilities aside, you know, you know, as far as like thinking about themselves. Bass players, Anthony Jackson, or it all depends on what style of music. Mm -hmm. Anthony Jackson, Jackson, or Marcus Miller, or Gary Granger, or Ronnie Skeet Curtis. Yeah. The reason for them is because they have big ears. You know, when they walk up on the bandstand, they, they, they're not just listening to themselves, they're listening to everything that's going on on that stage. I would like to hear that band and see that all of you on the stage someday. So, we can only hope. I wish they turned turn to... Is that the hair? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank God. <laughs> Thank you very much. It was a pleasure for us to meet you and to have you here. Denise Chambers from Morgan Basecamp 2016.